Sanford Restaurant is considered one of the best in the Midwest. Only 20 people can fit into the upscale dining room at a time. Out 19. But they are still able to serve plenty of others. Oh, I really enjoyed it. That was really good. I like the way, I like the way they cook that food. I like the way they it too. Sanford is among eight or so restaurants, including some of the top rated in Milwaukee, that provide meals to the guest house, the city's largest publicly funded homeless shelter. A volunteer helped start the effort in 2011 after seeing what the men were eating. Food goes right to the brain. These guys need nutrition to get their lives back and to be able to go out on the street, find work, and get their health back. So Dale Ryan, who is retired from the food industry, went to his friends in the restaurant business for help. I would sometimes go home at night and find that I would be crying in the car uh, because I was so overwhelmed because I was not getting any rejections. With the help of restaurants and other community and faith-based volunteers, the meal program went from providing 40% of dinners to about 90%. Tonight, it's Sanford's turn, cooking for the shelter's 86 men. At the helm, Justin Abrahamian, a nationally recognized James Beard Award winner. We take a lot of pride in what we send over to the guest house. You know, we don't, we're not cutting corners on anything we're making for them. The chef's choice, a cassoulet. Cassoulet is kind of a, a classic French stew where you get a combination of, you know, it would be some duck meat classically, sausage, pork, beans, and, and you know, a bunch of vegetables kind of all stewed together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can tell it's, it's, it's not like a, like a person that's made of that from home. It, it tastes better than that. <laughs> I don't know that much. <laughs> Robert Howard is on the verge of leaving the guest house, having been off heroin now for almost two years. But he says he'll make sure to properly time his return visits to see his caseworker. Yeah, I know when a good meal is coming out of here. <laughs> a creature comfort these men don't take for granted. Carrie Antelfinger, Associated Press. <laughs>
So 18 months ago, the students began what they call the Food Recovery Network. Each night, volunteers would show up at a campus dining hall to pick up leftovers and deliver them to area shelters and food banks. When we started, we collected, I would say, a little bit more than, than we currently do now, so maybe between 100 pounds and 200 pounds of food per night. So far, they have donated more than 23,000 kilos of food that would otherwise have been thrown out. The amount of wasted food was also reduced when school officials removed trays from the dining hall. Rob Fahey is the chef. We do not use trays because uh, it's, it's proven that the students fill up a tray and this way they only pick up their plates and they can only grab so much food and then they can go back in line to get more food if they want. That prevents wastage for that. Nationwide, $165 billion worth of food is wasted each year, according to the National Resources Defense Council. Spokesman Bob Keefe says that's about 40 percent of the country's entire food production. If we could reduce our waste in this country by 15 percent, we could feed 25 million hungry Americans. That's, that's a huge benefit, and that's what programs like the Food Recovery Network are doing. Christian Life Center is one of the beneficiaries of the students' efforts. Ben Sly is the senior pastor. It's just been amazing to see these students uh, take their own time, their own vehicles, their own gas money, and, and uh, be able to take an effort like this. Each week we're able, with this food, to probably feed over 100 people. The University of Maryland's Food Recovery Network now has 200 volunteers, and the program has expanded to 18 schools across the country. We want to grow our 18 chapters to 1,000 chapters within five years, and once we get uh, to this food recovery nation of being at every college campus in America, we want to expand out to restaurants, to farms. The volunteers are committed to making that happen. For producer June So. I'm Carol Pearson, VOA News. 88 years old and a great-grandfather several times over, John Walker retired decades ago. But several times a week, you'll find him hard at work. The ladies box the bread. I take the boxes and stack them on a pallet. It is food destined for hungry families, food that would otherwise go to waste. I figure that I, that's good for me at my age. Uh, I need to keep busy, you know. Shirley Elwell is 72, and the aches and pains of age make it hard for her to walk sometimes, but she's hell on wheels when she drives her forklift. There's a lot of people that need help, and we're helping them. Shirley and John are two of the more than 500 senior citizens who volunteer at Senior Gleaners in Sacramento, California. Founded 30 years ago, the organization collects unused vegetables from farms, groceries that are nearing their expiration date, and day-old bread from local bakeries. The food is packed up and distributed to feed the hungry. Even suburban gardens can provide a bounty. This crew, led by a 78-year-old called Big George, is harvesting citrus fruit from Margaret Miranda's backyard. I just don't want them on the ground. I want them used. 49 million Americans are food insecure, meaning they may not know where their next meal will come from. But Senior Gleaners President Gary McDonald says there's plenty of food to go around. It really it's, it's getting it from, the, from where it is to the people that need it. It's really a shame that we waste as much food as we do. We waste, as Americans, 96 billion pounds of food per year. Now, billion? Some billion, with a B. Many of the volunteers themselves are low income and need help putting food on their own tables. Barbara Ramey Clark is raising three young grandsons with disabilities. They're always happy when I come home, when they get home from school, they always want to see what kind of treats we got. And it helps because we don't really have the extra money. Shirley Elwell says knowing she's helping the hungry gives her a sense of purpose. We have snow on the rooftop, but we got a brain and we use it. And they're making the world a better place, one box of food at a time. Every little bit helps. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Sacramento, California. My heart hurts. I truly loved my job.
and I can't say I wouldn't do it again. It's been a week since Daylene Bowden lost her job at Irving Middle School. The former lunch lady can barely form words when describing what led to her dismissal. Why did you do that? You said you love your job. <laughs> well, because they're hungry. What do you do? Send them out there? So they can get it taken away and thrown away? No. Last Tuesday, Bowden was working as a server when a 12-year-old girl told her she didn't have any lunch money and was hungry. So I handed her the food and said, here, we'll take care of it in a minute. Bowden's supervisor saw what happened and reported her. He said I was on permanent leave until he would call me. I, wouldn't, I, would, I should not call them. He would call me. And they never called me. I got the letter. Signed and written by School District 25 Director of Human Resources. In that letter, Bowden was terminated for theft. I think it's ridiculous. Residents in Pocatello do not agree with the school district's decision. That's absurd and that's a ridiculous reason to fire somebody. I understand rules but not when a child is, is hungry. Through social media, Bowden has rallied quite a number of supporters. She tells me parents of Irving Middle School students want her back. But Dean Mulder says there's a bigger problem here. If a kid cannot pay for a meal or a parent cannot pay for a meal and, and a person is punished for feeding that kid, somebody's got it wrong. Something is not right. I saw a very old man. He was eating his own human waste for hunger. I thought, what is the purpose of my life? What am I going to do? In a star hotel, I feed all my guests. But where in my hometown, there are people who are living even without food. I, I quit my job and I started feeding all these people from 2002. Today morning, we made uh, Ben Pungal and Sambar. Then fungal is a blend of uh, rice and dal, and for the lunch we made uh, tomato rice and sabzi. We fed the homeless, mentally ill destitutes, and the old people who have been left uncared of the society. People are suffering for food. They don't have food to eat. If you don't give them food to eat, they will die out of human hunger. I cut their hair, I give them a shave, I give them bath. For them to feel psychologically that they are also human beings, there are people to care for them, they, are, they have a hand to hold, hope to live. Food is one part, love is another part. So the food will give them physical nutrition, the love and affection which you show will give them mental nutrition. Brahmins are not supposed to touch these people, clean these people, hug these people, feed these people. Everybody has got 5.5 liters of blood. I am just a human being. For me, everybody are same. What is the ultimate purpose of life? Is to give. Start giving. See the joy of giving.